voice of the Brooklyn Nets and a longtime voice of CBS Sports, Ian Eagle, back on the Rich Eisen Show. Ian, thanks for calling in. Appreciate it. Great to talk to you, Rich. How you doing? I'm fine. What have we gleaned from the first eight games of the playoffs? Anything? Yeah. Very strong opinions are formed after game one in all of these series. It happens every single year. We all fall victim to it. And then things begin to develop over the course of the series. I think this Washington-Toronto series, the only team to go on the road and win in game one of this first-round series, still is going to have a lot of twists and turns along the way. But I do think people jump the gun a bit after game one. Well, in terms of that, I mean, a lot of people take a look at how the Spurs needed to win that final game against New Orleans for the two seed, lost that uh, yep. decidedly. And then last night, uh, much of the East Coast might not have seen it because it happened past midnight East Coast time. But the, the Clippers looked this, made, made the Spurs look slow, old, like they done did. in a way. They did. And things that you don't normally take into account with San Antonio, which is poor shot selection, lapses on defense. It just it didn't work. It wasn't working. We know that Baines now is going to be immortalized in a number of Blake Griffin posters. <laughs> yes, that that just uh, that's going to stick with you a while. That one's a little hard to get out of your brain if you're Aaron Baines. I thought that was a strong opening salvo from the Clippers because all the scuttlebutt, and I'm sure you've heard it in L.A. leading up to this series, they're not deep enough. Once they get to that bench, L.A. can't match up with San Antonio. Questions now out there regarding Chris Paul and his inability to put a team on his back in the postseason, whether that's fair or unfair, uh, the numbers speak for themselves. And now Paul has an opportunity to, to put an end to that rhetoric and knock off a team that really the day before the regular season ended, many people felt could go and win another NBA championship. So how quickly things can change yes. in terms of perception in the NBA. Ian Eagle joining me here right now. You called uh, Nets and Hawks, you're the voice of the Brooklyn Nets. You, you were there for game one of that series. Uh, Deron Williams has certainly been the subject of quite a bit of derision. Um, he was singled out by Paul Pierce talking yep. about his his brief tenure in Brooklyn. What? Where, where do you stand on the topic of this very talented point guard that the, the Nets need, obviously, in order to uh, matriculate? Yeah, I think what happens often, Rich, not just in basketball, but any sport, when you're paid maximum money, maximum anticipation builds for your performances. And although Darren Williams is making the most that you can make right now as a member of the Brooklyn Nets, it doesn't mean that maximum money means maximum leadership. It's just not in his DNA. It's, it's not who he is. And... Look, we've seen it now. Joe Johnson got booed in Atlanta. He spent seven years with the Hawks. He made the All-Star team six times. They got out of the first round of the playoffs a number of times. It really wasn't his fault that he was offered two huge contracts in his NBA career. Yet, uh, I think there's a cause and effect that happens not just with fans but with other players. Pierce, there's some bitterness there. He wanted two years, $22 million from the Nets to stay. They didn't offer it. He signed for two years, $11 million with the Washington Wizards felt as if uh, this was a detour in his career going to Brooklyn from Boston and ending up in Washington in a good situation. You know, with Darren, uh, there's often a lot, I think, that happens above the neck that no one quite understands. He's very talented, but we just haven't seen it sustained over long stretches in a Brooklyn Nets uniform, and they need him. If they're going to win this series, uh, he's going to have to play better than he did. He's going to have to be more involved than he did in game one. He just looked hesitant and reluctant early in the game, made a couple of aggressive drives in the fourth quarter, helped lead a comeback, cut it to three, and then uh, saw Atlanta pull away at the end and get the W. Yeah, and Atlanta has the luck of the draw as well because it appears – that they're going to, if, if everything works out, they'll get the winner of the Cavs and Bulls series that everybody's sort of penciling in right yep. now uh, in that Eastern Conference bracket. And both teams, the Bulls and Cavs, had a really nice first game, certainly with Kyrie Irving in his first playoff foray with 30 points, Derek Rose coming back and looking spry. Who do you think advances should those two teams meet, I <sighs> You know, I'm, I'm on the Cleveland bandwagon right now. I just feel like it's all starting to fit together. And whatever ups and downs they went through during the regular season with LeBron and Kevin Love and LeBron and Kyrie Irving and LeBron and David Blatt and LeBron and everybody else, they've gotten through it. And they've gotten past it to the point now where they're focused on what has to happen for them to be consistent and 
to be cohesive. Just watching them against Boston yesterday prior to the Nets-Atlanta game, it's okay to be tested. That's good. That, that's a good thing. I even think with Golden State, I know people kind of jumped on it late that New Orleans may have – uh, found some things out about Golden State. I, I don't think it's a bad thing at all to feel some pressure in these playoff moments. Now you've got to get through it, which Cleveland did, which Golden State did, which the majority of the home teams did. And my feeling now with Cleveland is this will be a building block. This is what they wanted. They wanted the Boston Celtics in the first round. They basically set it up that way with two head-to-heads late in the season where they didn't play their guys, so it would line up against Boston. They got what they wanted. They delivered in game one. I have too many questions with Chicago just on a physical standpoint, strictly physical. I know how hard they play. I know what Tom Thibodeau brings to the table with these guys, but Rich, asking them to stay healthy throughout this playoff process is probably too tall of an order. You ready for the schedule to come out tomorrow, Ian? Find out where you're going uh, this fall? Rich, is it a three-hour program? Is that what I heard correctly? Well, I, look, you could call it a program. I call it an extravaganza. <laughs> it's a three-hour extravaganza. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. I'm ready. I'd like you to text me ahead of time, if possible, exactly where I'm going. That would really be a solid. Well, is it wrong that you know Fouts already has dibs on that oh, line? Is that wrong? Bearded that, you know the beard, fellow. Yeah, the beard says uh, don't don't give it to the bird first. And, and, and Rich, bravo as well on. for your performance on the Odd Couple on <laughs> CBS. <laughs> Tremendous, and Thank you. It, it also provides hope and incentive for a guy yeah. like me because yeah. I know how much you love the Odd Couple growing yes. up. Come on, Th- that means that I have a chance to one day appear on a remake of my favorite show, Formative Years, and that's what's happening. Yeah, and, and the fact that I might be able to recreate mm-hmm. which Doobie you be one day in my life. <laughs> It gives me hope. You know what? Uh, the Odd Couple, because uh, you're you're because Kenny Smith was in here last week too. So you're you're like us. Yeah. The Odd Couple and then the Honeymooners and Channel oh, Eleven back to back. It was back to back. That was look. We didn't have many channels. Nope. Uh, I I had no cable growing up in Forest Hills. There was a huge fight over right. the cable system. So this is all I knew. I, I just knew Channel Eleven, Channel Five was in there as well. Occasionally Channel Nine, and yep. then the affiliates. It was all odd couple all the time for me. Yeah, and maybe they could reboot it with Chip Kelly and Tim Tebow now. <laughs> you know, How once, about that? You've you got would, a lot to cover, don't you? Oh, gosh. there's Look, Tebow is the name that shall be spoken on this program. <laughs> Always. <laughs> and there's a sound effect, Ian. Just, You've met him, though, right? Rich? Oh, you, yeah. You know him. He's a good dude. He's a, he is a great I guy. Know. Are you, he's someone that you should root for. Absolutely. I met with him, I don't know, three or four times, and each time I walked away more impressed. I think he's the only NFL player that looked me in the eye and said my my name, but not as Ian, as Mr. Eagle. Oh, gosh. I've never been called that in my life. At <laughs> hotels, they don't even call me that. And he called me that when I walked in the room. Mr. Eagle is here. Mr. Eagle. I know. Like, what? Can you vamp a Scorpion promo with Tebow in it, Ian? Do you think you'd be able to do that? Catherine McPhee stars in Scorpion. Special guest, Tim Tebow. All coming up, that'll be followed by Battle Creek with Josh Demel and Dean Winters. <laughs> and Johnny Manziel guest stars. <laughs> yeah. Ian, thanks for calling in. That was very well done. It seems like you've done a Scorpion promo or two in your day. That's, right. my, that's my go-to. It's my bread and butter. All right, well, enjoy the schedules released tomorrow. I'll be there all three hours on the extravaganza tomorrow night. I'm sure you'll be excited. locked in. Excited for the extravagance. Thanks for calling in. We'll chat soon. That's Ian Eagle, voice of the Brooklyn Nets, giving us the 411, if you will. The Rich Eisen Show, weekdays at noon Eastern. On Audience.